Now, electronics can be pretty frustrating sometimes, um, and it can make you feel like you just don't know what you're doing, and it can put you off. You know, I've done electronics projects before in the past, and it's been so annoying, it's practically put me off doing it for life. Anyway, I'll give you an example of that right now. Um, I've got an out of focus project here, which is um, just like a, a few bits and pieces that I've been putting together as part of tools for the CPU that I'm building. So at the top here, we've got um, an 8 bit uh, binary to decimal converter. So we put in a value in binary on this um, that's a great fat ribbon cable here that is getting in the way of this, the camera. So 8 bits come in here, I've got an Arduino here and it converts the 8 bit binary number into decimal on this display which for some reason needs a bit of shadow over it. Um, and this is being fed by this circuit here which is an 8 bit counter. So I've got here two 74HC163s which are equally as out of focus as ever. Um, so there's 748 74HC163 chips and they are 4-bit binary counters which means that they count a number, a 4-bit number so they count, start counting at 1, they count up to the maximum number you can get in 4 bits which is 15 in decimal and then they go back to 0 uh, which is pretty useless really if you think about it counting from 0 to 15 and then back to 0 again but if you chain two of them together which is what I've done here with this little straight blue wire here the overflow of the the one on the right is feeding in to the count pulse of the one on the left, so that um, we end up with a a four uh, a four bit binary counter, another four bit binary counter, making a combined eight bit binary counter. An eight bit isn't quite so rubbish because it, an eight bit number counts from naught to two hundred and fifty five, so it's not quite so utterly dire as a four bit binary counter. So rigging those two together there um, gives me a an 8-bit binary counter um, and I've powered that up and all these yellow wires here are just taking the 8-bit um, the number out to this annoying uh, not very bendy ribbon cable which I probably wouldn't use again because it's getting on my nerves but anyway and then it's a, it sends the 8-bit number through to my 8-bit binary to decimal display so currently we've got 255 in my counter uh, which is being converted to decimal, it's 255 in bits, that's uh, that's eight ones, isn't it? So the 74HC163, which we're trying to focus on, um, is clocked by a clock pulse, which comes in to this pin here. So the clock pulse, they're both clocked together, actually. Um, the clock pulse that comes in here, it's expecting a pulse going from low to high in order to increase the count by one, basically. Um, so what we need to do is put in a clock pulse that's normally zero. We press a button, let's say, and it goes to one. We let go of the button, it goes back to zero, and that will move the clock up from, say, it's sitting on 10, it'll move it up to 11. What could be simpler? Well, how about if we get um, uh, a micro switch? Uh, solder it onto some pins, ram it into this bit of circuit where this solderless breadboard here, uh, connect it up, um, going into the clock thing, press on it. It's quite a nice micro switch actually, does not Quality. So we get, uh, I, that'll make a nice clock pulse, won't it? We'll get that going through and that will make the clock, uh, these 8-bit these counters increase by one each time and we'll see the number increase on my display so I'll press that and it'll go up by one let's try it okay simple so what I've done is I've put the micro switch into the circuit here um, I've connected one end of it to power the other end I've connected to ground via a high value resistor and then I've taken the by this yellow wire here I've taken the pulse that comes out the end of it so if so normally when it's open we should be connected to ground when it's closed, we should be connected to 5 volts. That should give us a lovely square wave that should go into here and increase the counter. And this is where I say, of course, electronics doesn't do what you think it's going to do. Um, it does 
what it wants to do. So if we then press the, um, so we're on 177 at the moment, we press the button and we go up to 181. Hmm, I think we seem to go up to 184. Now we're on 177. What? It's completely barking mad. It doesn't even make any sense. 189? 185? What? What's going on? Well, I have to say, I'm not actually 100% certain what is going on there. Clearly, we are sending a pulse through, um, but it's not making the, <laughs> the counter do anything <laughs> sensible at all. And of course, you and I both know why this is, is because the switch is bouncy. You get bounce when you press a switch. You don't get a clean clock pulse at all. It's nothing like a square wave. You might get several tiny little pulses. You might get some dreadful, slowly increasing and decreasing pulse. You don't get the nice clean square wave that the counter needs. No idea why it counts back down again. That goes 189, 188. 176? I mean, what? I've got no clue. But it's not the clean clock pulse you'd expect. Where can I get a nice clean clock pulse from? Well, I'll get one from my square wave generator. So here's um, my uh, clock generator. It's a square wave generator. It's got a uh, uh, speed control on it. Uh, so you turn this potentiometer and we can turn the speed of the pulse up and down. It's got um a 555 timer which is this chip on the top here it's got a few other bits and pieces which are not too relevant to this and it's got a green bodge wire because i made the pcb design slightly wrong i didn't read the, the um didn't read the data sheet as you can find out in another video but to cut a long story short this creates a square wave which comes out of one of these pins on the top here and it is a good clean square wave because it's been cleaned up by this um, this chip here, and um, you can control the speed of the square wave. Oh, and you can turn it on and off as well. Let's try it out. Okay, so sanity is now prevailing. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Yep, that's actually working, isn't it? So what's happening here is the, the clock pulse from my um, clock pulse generator, which you can control the speed of, is passing through to the um, to the, the counter chip and it's making it count up so we can count up slowly oh that is slow and we can count up fast let's see how fast we can go I put the wrong um, resistor values into this board actually because I can't count massively fast but I think it's safe to say that that is actually counting perfectly I'd be quite surprised if it wasn't um, Yep, we're counting. So a good clean square wave going into the 4-bit counter will count. A rubbish, not even slightly square wave coming out of a micro switch pressed by hand is nothing like going to uh, work with this chip. So what would actually work? Well, hopefully this will work. So this is my um, debounced uh, switches PCB. And what I've done is I've... Um, I've mounted six of those little micro switches, exactly as we had before, onto a PCB. And I got hold of a rather snazzy MC14490 IC, which is a hex debouncer IC. It's an IC dedicated to the laborious task of debouncing um, switches. And it does six of them. So uh, we've got six switches. They just go into this IC in order to be debounced. And I've got an LED display here to display whether they're on or off. Um, and that's about it. It's a pretty simple circuit. And the six, the outputs of the six switches come out the top. And just for a bit of variety, I made the three switches on the left normally on, and you have to press them down to turn them off. And the sweet three switches on the right normally off, you have to press them down to turn them on. Can't really remember why I did that, but there must have been a good reason. Okay, so I've connected up power to this now and I've connected it through to the clock uh, to my 8-bit counter circuit and right through here at the back to the um, to the 8-bit um, decimal display. So the lights on the left, the three lights on the left show you the three switches on the left, whether they're 
on or off. So they're the three normally on. So if I press them down, they go off. Um, and the three switches right over on the three LEDs right over on the right are for these buttons here. They go on. Why did I use an eight, a ten segment LED display when I could have just used six ordinary LEDs? I can't answer that question. I don't know what I was thinking of. Anyway, that's what I did. So this, so and the debouncing circuit does actually debounce it quite well. So you can actually see there's a slight delay when I press it on, and a slight delay when I press it off. I think slightly too much de delay, and the delay or the timing is controlled by this capacitor. And the instructions, the, the data sheet for it is a little bit vague on the value of the capacitor. And I think it should be a 103 capacitor. So what's 103? 10,000 picofarads, is that? Is that 10 nanofarads? I think that's 10 nanofarads. I couldn't find one of those. I used a 104, which is 10 times too big. And I think it's slightly delayish. I think I should... Um, Maybe take that capacitor out and put a 103 in when I can find one. Crank it down so it's a little bit quicker. But it seems to do the job perfectly because as we can... Oh, I've got it rigged. I've got it connected up to my counter on this right-hand button here. So when I press the right-hand button, uh, we go 160, uh, 161, 162, 163. It doesn't matter how long I hold the button down for, uh, I get a good clean result. So we've debounced this rather uh, bouncy micro switch. I think micro switches would be pretty good quality, wouldn't you? But they do need debouncing. So I've debounced the bouncy micro switch into a good clean square wave signal, which goes through and um, makes the counter count absolutely perfectly. Um, so that's debouncing. And it's done. I mean, there are loads of ways. If you look up debouncing on the internet, you can find there are hundreds and hundreds of ways of doing debouncing capacitor and resistor circuits um, using you can use a 555 timer you can put it through various different logic things but I thought it'd be quite interesting to use this chip this MC14490 and it just seems to do an absolutely perfect job you can't really fault it pretty simple connect the switch up connect the capacitor and you've got six switches being debounced really easily I got it off eBay, it wasn't very expensive, but it's not a massively easy chip to find anywhere other than eBay direct from China. I don't think it's a new chip either, I think it's been around for quite a long time, judging by the antiquated nature of the um, the uh, data sheet. Let's just check this 8-bit uh, eight bit uh, counter. So when we get up to 255, which... And you, one thing about, because I put too much delay in, you can't actually go <laughs> crazy on the button because it, it debounces even those bounces. So you have to go quite carefully with it. But we should get up to 255. We should go back to zero. The suspense. Nearly there. Not long now. You better believe me. No. We skipped zero. How did that happen? How did that happen? 